Hi, my name is Greg Kruger. I'm the cropping system specialist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about application technology. And in particular, we're going to talk about applications in uh, weed, uh, weed control. Um, we're going to be talking about herbicides and how herbicides are affected by droplet size. Over the past 15 years or so, we've, we've become really heavily reliant on Roundup, uh, Roundup Ready systems. So uh, with Roundup, we know that uh, the herbicide works really well with large droplets. And the, the, the beautiful thing about that is, is that with large droplets, we also have less drift. Um, now that we've had some, a few cases of Roundup resistant weeds in the U.S., and, and particularly here in the Midwest, there's uh, we're looking at alternative modes uh, of action to try to manage our weeds. So adding these new modes of action uh, brings in a whole new challenge to weed management. Looking at droplet size and stuff has become critical because these new herbicides don't all behave the same way that Roundup does. Some of these herbicides actually behave a lot or work a lot more effectively when we have a small droplet. So uh, the problem is that when we spray herbicides with small droplets, we, we really get a huge uh, potential for drift, especially on breezy days like today. Part of the reason that we're really looking into droplet size now is, is because uh, the EPA is working on new policies to um, manage drift and drift complaints. So in, in the near future, it's going to be important to understand how droplet sizes and, and droplet formation works because uh, the EPA is uh, adding new things to the label. For example, on uh, new pesticide labels, uh, farmers are going to see uh, maximum wind speeds at which they can make applications, they're going to see uh, droplet size from either a medium or coarse or, or whatever may be best suited for that particular pesticide on the label, as well as they're going to see setback zones from the downwind edge of susceptible species. And so that's, that's one of the things that the EPA is doing to try to mitigate drift complaints. Because of that, uh, uh, farmers are going to have to be real cautious about how they make pesticide applications in the future. Additionally, the EPA is working on uh, what we call a DRT policy, uh, just short for drift reduction technology. And I, I equate it best probably to the Energy Star system where companies will be able to go in, test their product for the ability to reduce drift, and then they'll be able to label their product as a drift reducing agent. A solid uh, weed management program is always going to entail uh, starting early. We, we recommend farmers start before they plant their crop. Consider using products that are going to allow the farmer to plant into a clean field that has no weeds. Using products with residuals so that we can keep the weed, or the weed germination down, uh, especially early in the season. And then using post-emergence applications as necessary. For example, Roundup is a good post-emergence herbicide, but we'd really like to build the uh, add that to the program and use a, a more comprehensive program where we're adding residuals, we're adding herbicides to the, the, the field before and after we make those applications as necessary. A, a good weed management program is always going to entail uh, a thorough scouting. It's important to be paying attention to what's happening in the field before just making an application to make an application.